Good morning all. Uh, my topic is assisted reproductive technology and its impact on uh, the psychology of women. Uh, first of all, introduction. <coughs> Infertility is defined as uh, defined clinically by World Health Organization as a disease of reproductive system defined by the failure to achieve a pregnancy after 12 months of uh, or more than that of uh, regular protected unprotected uh, sexual intercourse. Infertility is understood to be difficulty of reproductive process, which is horrifying for women and men similarly as well as being a medical issue infertility has its own social and psychological dimensions as compared to married couples with children it is said that couples with infertility demonstrate considerably advanced psychopathology in the form of self-blame pressure depression unfriendliness nervousness and suicidal tendency one of the significant challenges faced by the infertility infertility couples is to learn how to manage infertility and treatment related to um, it in a very personal sense relationship with own partners and in different social arenas like family friends relatives and co-workers for most of the infertility infertile couples infertility causes a serious issue on their interpersonal relationship the condition of infertility could be could also be associated with deep sense of guilt shame and decreasing self esteem because infertility represents to a failure to achieve a desired status it is often experienced as a threat to identity as far as the perception of isolation is concerned, some researchers have focused on the feeling of envy and jealousy towards relatives or friends who, on the contrary, do have children. Other studies also showed that discovering one's infertility could generate feelings of impotence and loss of control over one's life and one's one's own body but it is seen that few of these social and psychological consequences vary according to the difficult different cultures the primary and uh, primary negative emotional response to the both infertility and assisted reproductive technology is usually either anxiety a sense of threat tension worry or depression a sense of loss, sadness, and lack of control. Our study revealed significantly worse psychological status in infertile, infertile women in terms of both depression and threat, anxiety compared with either a group of fertile women or the normative population. <clears throat> From a sociocultural perspective, infertility is seen as female physical defect and people tend to engage in negative commentary about infertile women. For these reasons, women can feel a huge amount of emotional pressure to procreate. Women who engage a reproductive treatment experience higher level of shamefulness and guilt than men. Some scholars also have been claimed that symptoms of, its, of this trace are similar to those associated with other serious medical conditions such as cancer negative communication uh, between the couples may affect the mental status of women more than um, more than the uh, communication between the couples who have good Undergoing art procedure is also associated with the presence of significantly higher depression and sense of same level that those obtained by fertile or infertile couples not going through art. In fact, art patients may experience the procedure as a source of deep stress, anxiety, and concern. In addition to that, the problems with self-esteem, 
marital and sexual difficulties, self blame and guilt, stigmatization, hurt, and role of failure have been reported to be accompanied with the experience of infertility. All this, uh, all this uh, does not buy up the couples to continue treatment and even resort to add may possibly lead to failure. The result, uh, results are disappointing. Authors like Away uh, have reported that evidence that women experience more infertility stress than men. Con uh, mm, Similarly, McMahon uh, concluded that women who have become uh, pregnant after IVF experiences are more uh, have more anxiety issues uh, than uh, than with uh, who conceived without any assistance. Undergoing assisted reproductive treatments can can be stressful, especially when they involve invasive procedure such as hormonal therapy and lapro laparoscopic surgery. Additionally, the low success rate uh, of the treatments may generate feeling of anxiety and stress that persists through throughout the treatment cycles, perhaps longer. The harm and risk associated with the surrogate women are still there even after the commercial surrogacy industry has been become a huge industry as a whole. The factor of factors responsible for getting women into surrogacy arrangements set up a physical risk, risk for her. The surrogate also suffered from direct risk associated with health and psychology as an outcome of drugs and medical procedures they are concerned with. Away from physical risk related to the surrogacy, there may be reasons for emotional trauma in the surrogacy process like the trauma of surrendering newborn to the hands of commissioning parent. The position usually surrogate, surrogates hold in uh, the place in her relationship with the commissioning parent and the art clinics Situate uh, at clinic situate the surrogate in a pathetic situation. More frequently, for the surrogates come from very low socioeconomic background, and they have low education level. Children's education, marriage in the family, purchase of new new house, and the inability inability to um, work uh, for inmate uh, pattern, partners are some of the main reasons for which usually women came to become surrogates. The events which necessitate a large amount of money compel women to accept surrogacy as, a option, as an option, later on become the main cause of uh, creating risk for women who became surrogates. It is also stated that uh, Right after giving birth to a child, the majority of surrogate, surrogate women uh, feel a mild moodiness or unhappiness, which also goes away quickly after some weeks of delivery of baby. Without any hesitation, it could understood that parenting can both emotionally rewarding and emotionally draining also. Making the decision to start a family really exciting but if you have difficulty in concerning conceiving, then the excitement can quickly turn into frustration, sadness, and anxiety. Even such uh, as miscarriage, stillbirth, and birth defects bring bring out for a mother host of other emotions, including grief, guilt, and anger. Several women are particularly prone to the side effects related to this process, and also suffer from and depression purely due to hormonal influences but very fortunately the side effects of the hormones used in the process goes away when the hormone treatments stops rachel cook also described that it is however not just the birth mother's physical health that might be at risk but there is actually actual danger to the mental health of the birth mother both through the pregnancy and after the uh, pregnancy of that baby
deliver of that baby. The risk uh, to uh, egg donors, the risk include the uh, egg retrieval surgery and an occasional long-term physical and psychological uh, psychological effect which may occur due to the use of ovarian stimulation hormones. Previous studies also demonstrate that there are some common reactions to hormone stimulation may include headaches, mood swings, bloating, bruising and abdominal pain pain uh, uh, though the techniques is uh, a technique is considered broadly as a safe process as it is executed by via a slightly invasive method either transvaginally or transabdominally with laparoscopic treatments treatment equipments egg donors who are unmarried they have described that they feel very traumatic due to transvaginal ultrasound and introduction to vaginal penetration for very first time in the whole process. Objectives of my study to assist the experiences of infertility on psychology of women, to find out the effects of assisted reproductive treatments on its different types of uses. Rational of the study, psychological effect of the uh, assisted reproductive technologies are being ignored. So I want to study the mental health of women going through different treatments. While in reviewing, I came across very few studies which are done in Odisha um, and uh, especially in coastal Odisha. So it is uh, uh, and uh, as we know, coastal Odisha uh, is uh, quite more developed than uh, other uh, areas of Odisha. Uh, so I am uh, interested to do it in uh, coastal Odisha. Research methods. Qualitative research methods was ad adopted. Data collected from both primary and secondary sources. Gathered data by random sampling method. Semi-structure interviews were taken. Study was collected in coastal Odisha, special, especially in uh, on the uh, Katak and Bhubaneswar city, city. Six infertility clinics from both the cities were chosen for data collection. Total 80 semi-structured uh, interview were taken. Psychological uh, risk on uh, risk on the uh, infertility women adopting uh, at while asked about psychological impact uh, on uh, her during and after treatment. One of my respondent replied that uh, I have married for 15 years now and I'm going through this, these treatments from last nine years at first miscarriages for five times. I went through several mental, tra mental trauma and I, I had started the treatment for depression. After taking treatment for one and a half years, again, tried for a baby. And luckily, after one failed trial, this time I got pregnant now. Another woman responded that after so many failed attempts and so many miscarriages, finally, recently, pregnant with triplets, which is again very painful and traumatic. One more respondent uh, uh, said that you, when you try for a long years and you get failed results, you then uh, you get into depression for sure. Uh, so it is seen that uh, due to family and societal pressure, to be a mother, then then they themselves feel guilty when the problem occurs. Uh, while they couldn't conceive, they got so depressed that they sometimes go for depression treatments. Sometimes women have psychological issues due to the treatments only. So uh, it has been clear that not only in uh, not only the infertility have the effect of psychology on women but the treatment uh, have also adverse effect on them
psychological risks uh, faced by surrogates. Surrogate mothers uh, maximum time during the surrogacy or procedure, surrogacy procedure, experience miscarriages, vital deaths, stillbirths, miscarriages, and so many failed transfer for the very first time in their lives. And surrogate women are generally seem to be take these failed attempts very personally, which later on cause to their psychological distress sometimes. Uh, the responsibility they assumed for their body, uh, uh, body's ability to achieve pregnancy, coupled with sympathy, they felt for intending parents climaxed for many, uh, many by the feelings of guilt when the pregnancy and their live birth was not achieved. It is seen that in my study, also surrogate mothers faced so many types of psychological issues during the whole process and after the birth by birth of child. The sur by surrogacy, they get introduced into some new things like health pregnancy, injections, medicines, stillbirth, miscarriage, and cesarean section delivery, etc which is not experienced by them generally at their previous pregnancies. So it become painful and traumatic for them. Sometimes the giving the giving the children to the commissioning parents also make them feel bad, bad and depressed. Though they later on understand the things, but they sometimes feel depressed. The effect of the hormones used in the process uh, uh, process also affect their psychology a lot. Psychological risk related to egg donors. One of the egg donors had replied that uh, this procedure was very traumatic uh, for unmarried uh, egg donors because transvaginal ultrasound was very painful. We have not been through it before. I felt very sad at the time of egg egg retrieval and i felt at the uh, uh, i felt the same as time of the other medical checkups too one more uh, egg donors also replied that the injections have uh, some uh, effects on my health like headache abdomen pain and nausea i had mood swings too so in my study it has been found that maximum of egg donors replied that they had a lot of medical complications through the process. Some of them replied that they don't find uh, find it painful, but they are in the need of money so that we are this much of pain. Some women have replied that it's very painful and traumatic and they also feel sigh because of van vaginal penetration they went through are very new to them, but they are in the process of money. Conclusions. Infertility is a social uh, situation and infertile people have to learn to manage infertility in relation to themselves. We know from previous research uh, also that infertile people find that it had to uh, manage infertility for themselves as individuals in relation to their partners in relations to their different social relations like family, friends, and co-workers. Infertility and its treatments are low, low control chronic stresses with severe long-lasting negative social and psychological consequences. A substantial minority of infertile couples also find that infertility brings them closer together and strengthen, strengthens their relationship. Most of the studies focus on the individual characteristic, for example, stress level, anxiety, depressive symptoms. Furthermore, although infertility is a problem for couples that to have managed by them, most of studies have focused just on the individual and not the couple as the unit of analysis. Although infertility is a highly prevalent social situa situation, there is a lack of studies on the impact of infertility and its treatment on the social relation. To conclude, long-term follow-up studies are sparse and have only recently started to be published. Data regarding long-term uh, consequences of infertility, infertility among men is missing. Compared to fertile women, infertile females 
uh, are characterized by a significant worse psychological status in terms of trait, anxiety, and uh, depressive symptoms. Coming to the term with one's own procreative limits, limitations could generate strong negative reactions such as anger, pain, dejection, and frustration. The participation of a psychologist in the clinical team would allow patients to be globally accompanied in their therapeutic experiences and reproductive health care prof uh, uh, professionals to be uh, relieved of the high emotional overload in the therapeutic relationship with patients with infertility problems, thus facilitating, facilitating uh, their clinical practice. Therefore, a multidisciplinary team approach that includes gynecologists, nurses, midwives, embryologists, psychologists, as well as other professionals could improve the quality of reproductive health care services offered to the patients suffering from infertility, surrogates, and egg donors too. If the woman give birth to a healthy child, then it's okay. But if the treatment results negative, or it was a miscarriage, stillbirth, or abortion, then the mothers have heavy psycholo psychological impact of that. If the surrogates have miscarriages or abortion, they got affected psychologically. Post-delivery post trauma is also there because they have to give away the baby after delivery. Caesarean delivery is also impact on uh, have also impacted on them a lot because uh, they might uh, have experienced uh, never experienced it before maximum maximum of egg donors never had the experience of vaginal ultrasound before entering into the process so they feel they also feel traumatic there is a need uh, uh, future research and recommendations there is a need for more large long-term prospects prospective cohort studies on the psychological consequences of infertility and its treatment in uh, on men and women. Studies on psychological consequences of infertility and its treatment uh, and on infertility on the in the broader context, family, friends, co-workers, society are important research priorities. More studies uh, are required in which couples are unit of analysis and among amongst infertile people who have not yet sought for treatment more studies are required to know uh, the psychological effects of arts on egg donor or and surrogates thank you thank you Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, Anita, your uh, yes, ma'am. I mean, your work you have uh, very effectively explained the you know the causes of. I mean, uh, which is uh, which are promoting surrogacy mm -hmm. and the trauma, uh, which mm -hmm. is accompanying, uh, you know, yes, uh, the compulsions. So, uh, my question to you is: mm -hmm. uh, This commercialization of, uh, you know, uh, the commercial surrogacy. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think? I, I mean, my question is related to that. Do you think commercial surrogacy is in a way dwindling the real uh, concept of motherhood? Is it challenging the real, uh, you know, the pious uh, motherhood we have always revered uh, or we always look up to? So uh, what do you have to say about it? Uh, yes, ma'am. So, uh, somehow it is affecting uh, the uh, normal motherhood. Actually, uh, in the uh, while we're talking about uh, commercial surrogacy, means uh, the uh, surrogates are uh, 
not that much uh, emotionally connected to um, means uh, that uh, child they are delivering it, it means uh, they know that uh, they have to earn money and uh, somehow uh, they have to uh, after delivery they have to um, give their baby to the commissioning couples so they are uh, sometimes they are not uh, that much emotionally uh, attached to um, the baby but uh, sometimes it's it is in that um, they are uh, sometimes emotionally also connected uh, to um, babies uh, some uh, some respondents means in my study also some respondents also uh, uh, said that uh, they they are uh, some uh, somehow emotionally connected uh, the baby they had carried for a long so uh, so it means uh, it's uh, quite affecting uh, means to the motherhood also i mean it is so very difficult to even uh, I mean, yeah, understand yeah understand that, yeah you know a mother instinct has become uh, mm -hmm. a, a motherly affection has become something mm -hmm. commercial. So yes, uh, yes, a good yes, study, uh, yes, and you've covered up all the all the nuances that one could cover under the concept. Yes, um, uh, if there is anybody else who would like to question uh, the presenter, otherwise we can move on to the next presenter. All right. Uh, I think they do not have any question. Yes, so can we have the next presenter? Thank you. The next presenter is Amruta Chandrasekhar, Faculty English Department, Karnal College, Trishul Kappa. Amruta, ma'am, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Hello. Yeah. You can take. Yeah, you can start presenting. Okay. So, good morning to all. My name is Amrita Chandrasekhar. I'm a faculty from the Department of English, Carmel College, Trishur, Kerala. My topic is a study of the hidden language in advertisements. So, our brain is divided into two parts: left and right hemisphere. The left side of the human brain is seat of reasoning and verbal skills. The right side of the human brain provides with intuition. Instinctive products which are brought out of fancy would be immersed into right hemisphere, while the complex products like computer must be sold on the basis of reasoning that appeals to the left hemisphere of the brain. Our brain is always absorbing information. The words on the screen, the images, the angle of the camera, the colors, sounds that it produces is all designed us to make think. Our brain subconsciously decodes everything that is seen on the television. In such visual domain, there are set of codes that work together, which make us think, evoke emotions in us like anger, excitement, sadness, and finally make us buy the particular product. Roland Barthes, in his book Zerzer, in, written in 1970, proposed five narrative codes that weave together to form the story or make us understand what is inside that particular thing. The first, the first five are hermeneutic code, pro aritic codes, semantic codes, symbolic, and finally, cultural codes. The hermeneutic and pro aritic codes provides the internal chronology of the narrative, while the semantic, symbolic, and cultural codes work on the connotative level and add depth to the visuals. My paper investigates whether these Barthesian codes exist in television advertisements. And if yes, how such codes can be applied and how they are acting in order to get the hidden messages in the advertisements. And for this analysis, I have chosen a set of uh, advertisements of different brands. Coming to the pro heretic code, it shows the narrative style. The audience follows the narrative observes the actions and anticipates what might happen next this comes under priority code for example i have chosen the famous uh, advertisement of hanes ketchup 
This ad was sorry, shortlisted in the New York Festival 2006. In this advertisement, one can see an Indian woman listing out the food to a waiter. Along with that, she orders ketchup. When the waiter asks for the name of the ketchup, she struggles with the name, which creates comedy as well as anticipation in the minds of the viewers about what she is going to say. When we apply pro heretic code in this ad, the housewife struggle to name the ketchup creates anticipation in the minds of the audience. We are seeing the narrative style of the advertisement and one wonders what will happen next. What is she trying to say? Similarly, it's a case of the Phoebe Cole ad. There is a famous ad in which uh, we see uh, an urban man uh, who is sitting patiently waiting for to catch fish. He is well dressed and equipped with all necessary equipment to catch the fish. At the same time, another man who is wearing a lungi appears to catch fish. And the fisherman is muttering some words in local language very loudly. And the fisherman applies glue to the different parts of the stick and inserts it inside the water. The stick starts to begin, uh, begin to shake profusely. Even the viewers, by seeing this ad, patiently waits what is going to happen next. It creates a kind of anticipation in the mind of the viewers. We can see the uh, urban man just sitting right to uh, uh, next to this person, waiting for what will happen next. This power of anticipation is used by many advertisements to keep the customer's enthusiasm up. OK, so this comes under the pro heretic code. Next one is hermeneutic code. This code refers to the mysterious elements of text or visual media where the reader concentrates on certain enigmatic scenes and tries to know what, why this is happening. This code informs our interpretation and the question we ask the narrative like what happened, how and by whom. In the already mentioned ad of the Favi code, as I said, we are patiently waiting what will happen. And by the end of the ad, we can see that the uh, a man wearing lungi catches a lot of fish when compared to man. And similarly, in the case of Haynes ketchup, uh, we can see after a long struggle to uh, uh, say out the name of the ketchup, the uh, Indian housewife finally says the name of the ketchup or the brand of the ketchup, Haynes. Okay, and the ad ends with a tagline takes a while to come out. It was a major hit during those times, and people still remember those ads. So this comes under hermeneutic codes. These codes are all working out when we are seeing an advertisement. Without saying the words, we are trying to understand this is happening, this is happening, and this is happening. OK, cultural code. Next is cultural code. This is the code that narrative assumes we all share. These are those elements of the common knowledge that we share as a community and therefore do not need any glossary to understand. Hindustan Unilever Limited, as part of Swachh Adat and Swachh Bharat initiative, launched its new campaign to promote healthy hygiene habits among children. Its advertisement portrayed Mahatma Gandhi, who comes and picks up a paper plate thrown out by a youth. Through the stereotypical depiction of Mahatma Gandhi in the advertisement, the ad is trying to demonstrate those ideas that were essential part of Gandhi's life, like the ideology of cleanliness, self-reliance, sorry, self-reliance, non-violence, truth, sacrifice, and Mahatma Gandhi had a vision to find sanitation and hygiene in every Indian home. So here we don't need any glossary to understand the reason behind the portrayal of Mahatma Gandhi in the advertisement. Similarly. Color plays an important cultural code. Co color can function as a sign in advertisement. Color speaks a language, words that just can't replicate. Nature taught us what certain colors mean. And in design, it is best to use colors according to nature's rules. Ads about bike is always shot in hilly areas where the green color stands for life, independence, enthusiasm, and something which is unstoppable. Ads on food, especially the ads of uh, famous brands like KFC, McDonald's, they always use red color. Red stands for energy, and it says that it churns hunger in viewers. Whenever we see ads of KFC with all the red and white uh, letters, it slowly, the color slowly churns out the hunger in the viewers. And we will have an immediate uh, 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 light towards eating uh, KFC and all. So these 
or also certain uh, cultural code certain elements inside the advertisement which have their own hidden meaning and they are playing a role inside our brain whenever we are seeing these advertisements next one is semic code this is the code that some connotative meaning in them that have some connotative meaning in them and gives the viewers a little more insight to the settings plot and meaning these codes that one share as a community they draws upon a common set of stereotypes that are self evident and self descriptive for example the famous ad about innova the toyota innova ad films amir khan in the ad amir khan who owns a vehicle is rep is a representative of youth who is confident full of poise and who enjoys good life he is represented as an entrepreneur visionary leader family man who jets around the world happily in his innova car similarly kabil dev featuring the bsa sporty bike uh, in the late 90s kinetic boost shows that it is an achievers bike the bike should be owned by those people who are who consider themselves as real achievers these are semic elements inside the advertisements in burger's silk emulsion ad luxel silk paint is compared to a flowing satin sari of a woman to indicate the smoothness animals are even depicted in most of the ads most of them use method of comparison to show how efficient their product is a cheetah galloping in the darkness now an animal animatedly the visual changes to a machine the cheetah in the bajaj rtz bike commercial is used to symbolize the speed grace and power of cheetah that this bike contains onida featured chameleon chameleon the brightly colored chameleon happened to fit the concept of high fidelity and color reproduction of onida tv majestic lines talking video cone ad uh, we can see elephants in certain bpl tv ads that was most famous during the late 90s lux soaps recommended many actresses like aishwarya rai which shows that we will get the skin uh, tone of these actresses when we are using this lux soap the message of a clear complexion and beauty is been uh, uh, produ produced in such ads and they use such kind of semi codes to make us understand that yeah this is equal to this and hence you will get this and this Fem similarly the fevicol's uh, logo is of two elephants which is a sign of strength elephant symbol la they launch the elephant symbol for easy identification amongst the carpenter during the uh, olden times its initial purpose was to help the carpenters to identify uh, fevicol immediately and uh, thereby increase their product symbolic code is the next one it extends beyond the immediate icon or stereotype to refer something larger it is somewhat similar to semi code but it gives you much more meaning rather than the semi uh, code the famous ad on mc in the commercial we can see a sarcastic visualization can be found in the situation of a helpless dying man and his greedy cunning son uh, seemed uh, taking money through the through the last will of the old man but he, but in the end all the attempts of the son go in vain by a drop of water which wipes off one from the sum of the document sum on the document or sum or that is he has written on the check the television commercial ends with a tag line through a voice over that a falling drop of water can change the life always keep mc in your house and all the relationship of a father with the son in indian society has been encountered and served with a touch of humor this is again an indication of social cultural aspects which have been encountered in the sense of humor and liked by the consumers all over india apart from the surface meaning the television commercial has also some kind of uh, symbolic meaning which shows which is uh, which has well presented the indian society which shows the issues of property disputes and money laundering which was prevalent in indian society and coming back to the older ad toyota innova ad films which films amir khan through the semi codes in the ad the ad is trying to say that if you want all the uh, all the peculiarities of a youth you should own this car 
these are all desirable identities and in order to possess all this you should have an innova car, car at your home what suggested here is a class of people who have power occasion desire to celebrate must own his car the tagline even says every day many roles but one car that is innova car so these are all the semi code that is a uh, symbolic code that has been playing around in every advertisements and silently conveying meaning to the mind of the audiences so in a con to conclude i have uh, uh, found out that most of the advertisements or most of the films that is been viewed in the television rather than the words portrayed or the tagline there are certain hidden messages that is trying to convey the meaning to your mind they are trying to understand the product is very well uh, famous and very well equipped and efficient uh, so i conclude my uh, paper thank you Hello, ma'am. Uh, yeah, uh, Amruta, uh, I would like to congratulate you for such noteworthy work. It is indeed okay. remarkable, and uh, it is unique, uh, a work of uh, work of its own kind. Um, I mean, uh, that has given. I mean, that that is a very new vista to research. Um, I mean, I never thought of it the way you explained it. uh i like your perception uh and how you put across that is also absolutely delightful so my question to you is what do you think uh, the hidden meanings are more impactful or if they are put verbally uh that can uh, put an end to any sort of confusion because uh, because everybody has a different way of uh, looking at the things so maybe the way you have perceived i may not perceive it the same way uh so what do you think uh are they uh, coming out as a very impactful way of expression uh it is not about their impact it is about their creativity i guess uh when we compare both this verbal and non verbal i'm trying to ask you uh all i'm trying to ask is uh, you know uh, they are creating something to uh, articulate or to sell their idea so do you think these illustrations are uh, i mean they are emerging as an impactful me medium or words if put verbally they are more impactful uh according to me i guess uh, these things which are non verbally communicating are more impactful than the verbal communication even the ads which i mentioned these are from the 90s and we still remember because of their visual presentation rather than their tagline so i guess these things are uh, the hidden messages are more uh, impactful rather than the uh, verbal messages conveyed in the advertisements yeah true because it is said that uh, in the whole process of communication uh, it's i think 75 or 85% is non verbal and rest 7% forms uh, verbal and some of it forms uh, you know uh, the written communication i mean a superb work done i'm i'm in mean, very thrilled to hear uh, what you have done uh, so uh, with this i would like to if there is any question for amruta All right. With this, we move on to the next presenter. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the presentation. The next presenter is Dr. Shabnam Ahra, head of the Department of Zoology, Anushin College, Mr. Srinagar, and Professor Samsul Khair, head of the Department of Sociology, Government Degree College, NK. Over to you, Dr. Are we there, ma'am? Shabnam Ahra and Shamsul Hat. Yes, I think I saw you just joining. Shamsul Hat, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah, yes, yeah. Sir, I'm okay. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead with the presentation. 
and your presentation must, must not exceed challenge. So make sure and keep your points sir, brief. Sir, can I... Okay, sir. Sir, am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are wrong. Sir, I am uh, Shamsul Haq. Hello, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Hello, hello, and good morning to all. Uh, I am Shamsul Haq, assistant professor in the Department of Sociology, Government Degree College, Gandharbal in JNK. And I will be presenting a joint paper with Dr. Shabna Mara, head Department of Sociology, Amar Singh College, Cluster University of Srinagar. First of all, uh, we are highly thankful to the organizers of this international seminar on language, literature, and social sciences for providing us an opportunity to present our research on this very relevant theme. We will be talking about gender health care in JNK with special reference to the appraisal of National Rural Health Mission. All the major and uh, minor findings of this research are based on field work conducted in one of the remote districts of the valley, that is District Badagam. The enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of health is one of the fundamental rights of every human being, without distinction of race, religion, political belief, economic or social conditions. Since most of the people in India live in villages, these rural and poverty-ridden population can access their basic right of health care from public sector. This requires sound public health care sector, especially in rural areas. With a view to reduce the rural urban gap in health care, Government of India launched a national rural health mission in 2005, which aimed at decentralization of public health care sector, removing horizontal and vertical imbalances in the public health care sector. NRHM is an intervention, intervention aimed at bringing about dramatic improvement in the health system and the health status of the people, especially those living in rural areas of the country. It seeks to provide access to equitable, affordable, and quality health care, reduction of infant mortality rate, and maternal mortality rate, population stabilization, and gender and demogra demographic balance, which in turn would help in achieving goals set under the National Health Policy and the Millennium Development Goals. JNK under this mission is focusing on empowerment of people through effective mechanism of rogi kalyan samitis, decentralized planning and implementation, strengthening of physical infrastructure and ensuring fully functional facilities at the doorsteps of the people, notwithstanding orders of topography and situational constraints. With an objective analysis of the program of NRHM, our study is decorated to access the availability, adequacy, and utilization of health services in the rural areas of District Badgam in the Valley of Kashmir. The role played by ASHA workers and to identify the constraints and catalysts in, in its implementation. Since NRHM and its sub schemes are the only support for maternal and child health care in the UT, anything noticeable done in the field of maternal child health is only through this program. However, this study explored <clears throat> that due to inefficiency on the part of the administration in the UT, the scheme has many lacunas in its implementation. The scheme is of less support to inhabitation in remote and far flung areas. The pressure is still on the third referral centers and hospitals, uh, for example, uh, Sikkim's, SMHS, and LD in Valley. This is why, in spite of the scheme, we don't find satisfaction among the general public about the healthcare system. In spite of this scheme, we found huge rush in the hospitals of Srinagar city. Unsatisfactory services, most of the people who can afford shift to private nursing homes and clinics for maternal child health care. Moreover, the study has explored many social challenges and hurdles which impede the proper implementation of the scheme. Let me begin uh, <clears throat> with the physical infrastructure and human resources available in District Bargaon. In District Bargaon, physical infrastructure in the case of sub-centers, primary health centers, community health centers, and district hospitals has improved to a large extent since the inception of NRHM. However, there are meager cases of PSCs working on 24 into 7 basis. Even if some PSCs function on 24 into 7 basis, they lack essential facilities. Like in case of one of the primary health centers, namely Hardapanzu in District Bargaon, they have human resource shortfall. That is unavailability of gynecologist, which is essential condition for maternal child health, staff nurses, and not even any female doctor. Unavailability of 24 hours electric supply. No well-equipped ambulances and inadequate continuous medical supply. The issue of shortage of ambulances and mobile health units is complex one and dominant factor in hampering the outreach of healthcare services in these remote rural settings. 
even when we look at the emergency obstetric care, caesarean and other surgical intervention services, these facilities are not available at respect to primary health centers. However, the condition of overall health care has improved to a large extent with the introduction of NRHM. As in the same case, PSC Hardupunzu was established in the year 1985 in a two-room building with no electricity and no water supply, having a stop of only one lab assistant and one pharmacist. The health center was totally in shambles till 2007 when it was covered under centrally sponsored this very scheme that is National Rural Health Mission. With the advent of NRHM, the condition of PSC is somewhat improved as under this program, the health center received the funds of 2 lakh rupees every year for the improvement of infrastructure and other basic facilities like water supply, electricity. NRHM not only provided money for infrastructural development, but also recruited additional staff in, the prim in this very primary health center. And with the increase in manpower and other facilities, health centers started working on 24 into 7 basis from 18th October 2007. That is after the intervention of NRHM. Since with the advent of NRHM, the various facilities now available at the health center are a labor room, laboratory for various hematological tests, dental section, and has total strength of six beds. The health center has one ambulance also. And according to health officials of the institution, all these facilities had been made available under NRHM program. In the health center is 14 employees comprising of four doctors, three nurses, two lab assistants, one allopathic pharmacist, one Ayurvedic pharmacist, one block health worker, one driver, and one sweeper. In addition to it, nine officials are associated with the health center who work in different areas of Hard Punzu, excluding one BDS doctor and one lab assistant. All the staff is recruited by NRHM. In spite of this, much needs to be done, and the recruitment of te technical and gynecological staff is the need of the hour. As health center is having the facility of ECG, but the technician who can operate this machine is not available. Thus, the facility is useless. Health center lacks X-ray and USG facilities, which are of immense importance for providing better services. And USG is very important for diagnosing pregnancy-related issues. That is not available in the primary health center. Now I will move to the next step that is <clears throat> district body. Maternal and child health care services remain the vital and dominant mission of the NRH. The registration of all pregnancies are reported from all PhDs in the first trimester before 12th week of pregnancy with the help of OSHAs. Although even if a woman comes late in her pregnancy for registration, she is registered and care is given to her according to gestational age. However, associated services like Providing iron and folic and tablet injections, tetanus toxide, etc., are not provided as per guidelines of the program. Doctors blame that inadequate supply of these medicines is responsible for inconvenience to the patients. As one doctor from <clears throat> one of the PSCs, that is Rayar Balgam, reported that only 30 tablets of iron and folic acid are supplied to the center on a monthly basis, which can which may suffice only one beneficiary. What about the others? But one cannot ignore the fact that with the advent of NRHM, minimal laboratory investigations like hemoglobin, urine, albumin, sugar, etc. are available at minimum cost rates in every PSC investigator. For the antenatal care of pregnant women, nutrition, health counseling is provided by proper health educators and ushers. Now I will move to the next step that is postnatal care through NRHM. With the help of mother-child tracking system of NRHM, this service has gained now new momentum. Now, the concerned officials track the record of every pregnant woman and child, and according to health officials, a minimum of two postpartum home visits, first within 48 hours of delivery, second within seven days through sub-center stop and OSHAs is made. The visit is also meant for initiation of early breastfeeding within half hour of birth, and the education on nutrition, hygiene, contraception, essential newborn care, etc., or, and counseling for the same with the help of ushers and health educators and at times through the health mailers. Now, family planning and NRH, I will be talking about. Education, appropriate family planning methods are the vital provision of the program of NRH. According to health officials, provision of contraceptives, emergency contraceptives, introductive devices, insertions, and permanent methods like tubal ligation and vasectomy no scalpel vasectomy and are promoted in every nook and corner of Kashmir society. But the challenge is that most of the women related diseases and complications remain concealed because of lack of lady doctor. As women folk don't feel comfortable in discussing their health related issues with male doctors. 
due to which women neglect various diseases. Uh, please conclude. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Please try. conclude. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. I have much more to talk about, but I will conclude now. I will be skipping those talking about immunization and all that with NRHM. I will move to the conclusion. I, I will talk about some no major things. Here is why NRHM officials are not, you know, working on. There are reports that doctors and uh, under NRHM working in far flung areas of Jammu and Kashmir are not getting salary on a regular basis. Also, that ISM doctors working in the same scheme are not provided the salary and allowances as admissible to them under rules. And uh, NRHM and the sub schemes are the only support for gender health care in the UT. There is no special policy or program for gender health care in the UT. Anything noticeable done in the field of gender health is only through this program. However, due to the inefficiency on the part of the administration in the UT, the scheme has many lacunas in its implementation. The schemes of less support to inhabitation in remote and far flung areas. The pressure is still on third referral centers and hospitals. That is why in spite of the seeking, we don't find satisfaction among the general public about the healthcare system. In spite of the seeking, we find huge rush in the hospitals of Srinagar city. It has also been noted that due to unsatisfactory services, most of the people who can afford shift to private nursing homes and clinics for general health. As mentioned, it has been reported in media that union government is not satisfied about the working and fund utilization of NRHM in the UT. The traditional and conservative attitude of common mosses coupled with pathetic attitude of bureaucracy is causing many headless in its proper implementation. Thank you. Any question for him? All right. Uh... Healthcare has always been uh, on the hit list of political agenda. Uh, but what is the real scenario we all know, uh, we all are familiar with. And uh, very uh, effectively, you brought out your insights on the topic and, uh, you know, uh, 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 your study on this particular topic, I would really, I mean, I really think that by talking about these issues and if healthcare issue will take round in the uh, circles, be it literary, be it uh, any other circle, political, social, economical, so uh, economic, uh, so I believe that change uh, it, uh, will definitely be seen and uh, our health condition, I mean, the health, uh, uh, you know, this department will really work and um, the edifice of uh, our country will certainly gain strength. So thank you so much for this uh, wonderful uh, presentation. With this, we move on to the less, uh, next presenter, the last one. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the last question is Mata Bhatma Banjuri, Prashrao, Sarah Bhatman of English, Swami Behan, Ahmad Kaur. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid, uh, but I'll have to make this announcement that we have to wind up. Uh, because we are, we need to start the second technical session. So okay, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, I will try to finish uh, as early as possible, ma'am. Am I audible, ma'am? Uh, my top. I am from Maharashtra, Mantha Padma Bandhavi Prakashara, Swami Vivekanand Mahavidyalay, Shrul Tajpan. Uh, my topic is liberated women, social reality, and Shobha Day. An overview. Shobha Day is one of the feminist Indian English writers, uh, a celebrity, a model, a col columnist, and a freelance writer, a script writer also. Uh, right from her works uh, that have been started by her, the, her works are persistently in discussion for her free and un unrestrained expressions, right from the socialite evenings to the selective memories. Uh, her works are almost uh, are in debate either for the liberated propensity or for the sexual encounters in her fiction. 
but the existence of such liberated characters in the society is a ground reality. Some are exposed by the media, while some are censored by the power politics. Trobade's first novel, uh, Socialite Evenings, is a romantic tale of a Bombay socialite, uh, Karuna. The ambitious and determined middle-class girl turns into a self-reliant socialite. As she grows, she longs for a career in movies uh, and prospects abroad. And after her marriage, she gets shattered with her husband, who doesn't care for her nor for her interests. So Karuna, a new woman, she turns rebellious against her callous spouse and finally gets separated from him. She even denies the offers of a Girish, a scriptwriter, and a Ranbir, a journalist, and she rejects them for their trickery and unworthiness. As a self-acknowledged person, she adopts singlehood. Additionally, the new women characters who represent new and urban women like Ritu and Anjali in Socialite Evenings, they're also depicted as free and liberated women. In Socialite Evenings, Choba Day depicts the hectic life of modern women and urban women who are after money and status. They are influenced by the Western culture. As a writer, Day makes earnest efforts to bring out the same in her literature. There is a criticism on her writings, uh, some supporting while others are dismissing. Sarbani Sain rightly says that Day has aroused a veritable storm and that a fiery debate rakes around her. If one section of the critics dismisses her as the princess of pornography, the other group extols her as a kind of queen among storytellers with her with the right to have an adulterated world at her beautiful feet. Her second novel, Starry Nights, is a story of love and lust of a budding star, Asha Rani. She is a liberated girl who later comes up as a popular, audacious woman. She is a dark, sweet girl from Chennai. She endeavors to become a film star. Her mother, Amma, prompts her to become a star at any cost. When Asha Rani is 15 years old, her mother forced her to become mistress of Kishan Bhai, a film producer, to get a chance in the films. But Asha Rani falls in love with Akshay Arora, a foremost film star. She looks more confident. Asha Rani looks more confident, powerful, and bolder than Akshay. However, she falls a victim to Akshay's selfish intentions. She even tries to commit to uh, suicide, but fails to do so. However, she struggles to exist in the film world. In that process, she falls a prey to many directors also. Like other women protagonists of day, Asha Rani designs a code of conduct for herself, which is free of the prescribed gender roles and restraints of the traditional society. Her approach toward life turns challenging and exigent. Ultimately, she survives against her downfall as a prey to man's lust in Indian Bollywood. Like other new women of day, Asha Rani is a liberated, self-sufficient, and ambitious woman. Woman, her life is a real reality. Such events take place in the many rising stars as they fall prey to the popular Bollywood actors, producers, and directors. However, Shobha Day's Starry Nights is also subjected to serious criticism. Sunil Sethi regards her work as a body's ripper, and Madhu Jain calls her starry nights as high society, potpourri, bland, and banal, bristling with orgy laced parties and oysteristic voice, servings, souped up four wheel drive sex in all the directions. But it is a fact that her works reveal the reality of the film industry, the social life of the so called elites, and socialites their attending pubs, parties, and their sex drives. 
Day portrays her characters on the same grounds. Shobha Day's third novel, Sisters, deals with the complexes and social psychological problems of the two sisters, Alisha and Malika, the business magnates. Alisha is half sister of Malika. In the beginning, Mal Mickey, I mean Malika and Alisha hate one another, but at the end, both the sisters develop compassion and affection towards each other mm -hmm. and are reunited in the end. They also expose their illicit relations and affairs, and they are bold enough to involve themselves in the infidelity and fornication. In the novel, Sisters, Shobade exposes the social reality of upper class, middle class, and business community who involve themselves in the illicit relations and liations. A change is imposed. A charge is imposed on Day that she writes only for the elites. Day's Snapshots. It is another work of Shobarde. It gives an account of the life of new women, their manners and adventures. It also reveals the life of the girls of Santa Maria High School who are educated, modern and urban. They challenge the male oriented society for attaining equal authority with them. They are not only independent economically, but also they take decisions independently and equivalent to man, men. The characters like Aparna, a self-governing woman, divorces her husband for her dominating nature. She receives, she revives herself in the new life with prayer. Swati is another new and self-determined woman. She believes in individualism. She turns down motherhood as she believes that nurturing leads to some presence on her career. On the other side, some other characters fasten up to their responsibilities. And it is the reality of the present day society. Social factors also contribute in the creation of any work. Shobhade, as a journalist, as a celebrity, and as a model in the world of glamour, had come in con to contact with many socialites. She had just recorded her experiences, her observations, and her reflections on their culture through her writings. Day is cautioning the youth about the social reality of the glamour world through her works. Though she is in controversy for her open descriptions of sex, she gives a realistic account of the affluent world. Her works are purely for the elites and about the elites. However, Day's works elicit both pros and cons. They distract the young minds, but at the same time, they warn the young minds, they warn the youth about the social reality. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. It was uh, resplendent hearing your views uh, on Shobha Day. Uh, Shobha Day is uh, known to be, I mean, she's known to be a ruthless writer because she's yes. straight yeah so uh it is i mean and it is very strongly promulgated that uh she uses her pen to the hilt uh to smash uh the ego of macho males so how far is it correct very quickly answer this uh so that we conclude this session yes ma'am Actually, as I have told, uh, this is the social reality that nowadays the uh, marriages are not at all uh, successful ones. So her observations where women are getting more liberated and they are becoming more dominant and we have to accept that. So her observations are put in the form of a yeah, yeah. in her writings. 
and uh, naturally uh, i could i would say one of uh, her works socialite evenings is her autobiographical work the personal experiences that she had uh, with the male oriented society she has also uh, narrated through in her writings yes okay, right. ma'am thank you very thank much you for your perspective thank yeah. you ma'am yeah uh, thanks to the, all the presenters those who presented the paper and also and also uh, much grateful to the uh, chairperson dr ruchi as a professor department of english national law university shimla himachal pradesh india thank you ma'am very much for moderating this technical session we are happy to have you and you you have took this this new session to the next level it's really good to see you. thank you very much thank you so much for offering me this platform where i could listen to you know diverse ideas emerging in the uh, you know in the arena of research so i enjoyed every bite of it and uh, i'm sure i'm going to use it when i'll be thinking on the same lines thank you so much for uh, having yeah. me here.